Hey everybody, it is week 13. Is it a lucky week? Maybe. Did I think it was gonna be a boring week? Yes, but I have a few surprises for you guys. Um, some things I've been waiting on for quite a while have finally happened. Hold on real quick, let me show you something. Yeah, that's one of my tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Way over here. Is it Potage? Potage is way over there. Tomatoes right there. So rude. But anyway. Okay. So week 13. Have some fun stuff in the garden. Um and like at the same time, things are starting to slow down. Um and I really need to start thinking about what I'm going to do for the fall. Um, and what I can also, you know, plant right now that's going to do okay right now. So, let's have a look-see. First, look how peachy beautiful that is. Look at that. Graham Thomas looking so um, orange instead of yellow. Very peachy orange and very beautiful. Uh, Plumeria pudica. And I tell you, these blooms still have not opened yet, and also there are little critters. I don't know what they are, but I feel like I need to spray them. I mean, I think I need to spray those. I don't know. What are they doing in there? Are they eating things? I don't know. We'll look at that by the nepeta, and I still need to finish trimming that. Coleus looks good. I did trim a little bit on the lantana. Um, it's getting kind of woody. Um, need to do some more trimming there. Dr. Witchy's yellow. That tomato that I did have is gone. It's just gone. Something took it. Or it's that right there. Who knows? So, we're starting all over again with the Dr. Witchy's. I'll come out here with my toothbrush and hit these flowers a little bit. Um, Cherokee purple. I still have the one, which is good don't have any others so I'll come out here again and try to pollinate these flowers um, I improved my lemon I put the bucket right there because I need to weed eat um, so I'll work on that leaves are still curling but I do have new growth so that's fun uh, zinnias doing fine uh, eggplant doing fine lots of flowers on the eggplant and I think um, I did have some pollination. There's one here. That one might turn into a fruit. We'll see. Habaneros. If there's a pepper in there, it's hiding. I mean, I have so many flowers, like a buttload of flowers and still no habaneros. Um, jalapenos, I do have a few that I could probably go ahead and pick. The skin is starting to crack a little bit. So this tells me that's as big as they're gonna get and I can harvest those. Yarrow's doing very well. My jasmine's doing all right, it's doing okay. Um, I probably will cut back some of that Richmond green apple. The foliage is getting real yellow. Um, I'm concerned about the vine board, but we'll see. Lemon balm is really spreading out, like it's really getting nice and fluffy. And then this is my Volgari oregano, it's doing really well. And then uh, my chamomile, chamomile, that lacy, ferny stuff. Chamomile's doing pretty good. Oh my God, did I come out here without my basket again? Jiminy Christmas. Um, all right, anyway, holy basil. I was gonna trim some of that right there so that I could use that for tea and so it could get bushier. Um, you know what, hold please. I'm gonna go get my basket. There we go, that's done. Um, okra is doing fantastic. So I am going to pick that curly one there. Reminds me of an elf shoe, it's kind of funny. Oh, there we go, in the basket. Let's see if we have any others. And also this stuff is so tall, look how tall this is. That's, 
over three feet tall, I would think. Getting bigger and bigger every day. Oh, and I will tell you, these okra do get away from you. It can be not ready to pick in the morning and you come back like two hours later and it's too big. <laughs> so I'm going to pick that one. There we go. Um, what else? Oh, the orange ones are really pretty. Let me show you. There's the Jing orange. The flowers, like this one isn't open, but the flowers are so beautiful. Um, I took a really pretty close-up shot of one of the Clemson spineless flowers, and it's just beautiful inside. Really pretty. But anyway, oh! <laughs> the, the thing is, too, sometimes you can't see these okra. Like, you just can't see them. But... That one's ready. Where's my clippers? There we go. Looking good, looking good. These sunflowers are not looking good. I will be harvesting heads and pulling out stalks. And thanks to Brampton Gardener, which apparently I'm gonna mention every week. <laughs> She's so good. She's so good. I am gonna be saving the stalks and drying them and using them for garden steaks. So thank you so much for that tip. Um, and if you don't subscribe to her channel, please do. She is amazing. Um, so yeah, grody, grody. I'm gonna cut all the heads off. Um, some of the seeds will be saved for next year and then some we will try to roast. Um, but all this has to come out and I think it'll improve the look of this area. All right. And these cosmos, I did tie them up, um, cause they were flopping everywhere. Um, and when I was tying them up, I noticed that there's a lot of, um, roots. There's a lot of roots along the stem. So what I think I may do is cut the stalks and rebury them in the ground. Um, Kind of like you would a tomato, like bury it deep and let the roots take over. Um, and maybe we could get some more life out of these cosmos and get them a little shorter because they kind of got a little tall and wispy and out of control. And they're still beautiful. There's still some blooms that haven't opened yet. But I was just thinking, because all those roots are along the stem, maybe I could bury them a little bit deeper. So we'll see. Maybe I'll only do one or two. California Wonder Peppers. Um... Still getting some flowers. The Lesia pepper is the most delicious pepper I've ever tasted in my life. I don't ever want a bell pepper ever again because I've had a Lesia. It's so juicy and crunchy. And I wouldn't say it's like the sweetest ever. I know it's supposed to be. Um, I wouldn't say it's very sweet, but it is so flippin' juicy and tasty. But yeah, I will definitely be growing these for the rest of my life. So Lesia pepper is amazing. Um, Cubanelle pepper. I did pick some the other day. I don't think they're any ready right now. They blend in with the foliage, which is the problem. And these zinnias are kind of falling all over them. I don't want to rip these zinnias out, but I may have to, or at least cut them back because they're falling into my peppers here. Um, but these are still looking very beautiful. Really nice. That pink one. That's beautiful. Okay, banana peppers are struggling just a little bit. And some of them are getting really stunted. Like this one is starting to go bad already. That one's starting to go bad and it's still tiny. So that means that's as big as it ever was gonna get. So I need to clip that off. Um, some of these, that's probably ready. And see these, these are turning a strange color. So uh, we'll harvest those, but we had, do have more flowers coming, which is good. The Borlato bush beans, I am going to rip those out. Um, some of them I did rip out, but I think I may rip out these two. The beans that it's producing, they're not getting very big and they don't look healthy. So those are going to come out. Uh, my patty pan squash down here, this flower was fully open earlier today, so I guess it's done. These are male flowers, but at least it started flowering. Uh, the vine looks okay. I think we have... Um, I think the squash vine borer has peaked for the year, so we shouldn't have any more issues. Um, but I will keep these vines uh, sprayed with the BT just in case. 
rattlesnake pole beans also the vines not doing so well and I'm not sure what's going on I did fertilize the other day but it may have been too late so we'll see I mean the, it's still putting on some beans I wish I had more because this is like my new all-time favorite green bean it's just really juicy really tasty um, asparagus is actually sending up new shoots like this is a new one here and then this is a new one some cute little flowers on there so that's cool garlic chives doing well these marigolds are doing good but don't be mad that I may have to rip out these zinnias at least just on this edge here because they're shading out the marigolds so that could happen um, and that looks like poop. yeah so things are still pooping on my things that's awesome um, the squash that I doctored up last week is doing really well and blooming again and those females just rotted look at that those females just rotted before they could even make a flower that sucks anyway these stalks do look a lot healthier the leaves are looking good so I think injecting it with the BT and wrapping in foil has helped so that's that's good these cactus zinnia are maybe surpassing the lily put as my new favorites they're just so pretty there's a pink one let me let me get in this bed here there's a pink one not that one not that one that was my favorite last week i have a new favorite over here not that one that one's pretty too look at that one pretty is that? So pretty. Even that pink one there that's done. Look at all that poop. There's so much poop. Okay, this yarrow. I harvested quite a bit for um, a little bouquet for the house by the kitchen sink. So this has been really fun to use for arrangements for the house. All right, tomatoes, tomatoes. Still have a few Brad's Atomic Grape in here. That one's split. Let's take that. Grr. Now here's my Persian lime. So all the buckets I moved into the beds over there and all my all my junk over there so I could weed it. Most of um, the tomatoes have been harvested. Just have a few to, uh, cherry tomatoes left. Um, that's the black cherry. And then of course Brad's Atomic Grape. Uh, more poop. Lily put mixed colors. Still cute. Still so cute. But those cactus, those cactus ones are cute too. Look at that one. Get that little lily put. I think I skipped over the amaranth last week. Amaranth is getting big, uh, bigger. Now it's in kind of a lot of shade. So I think once I trim back some of this foliage from the tomatoes, the amaranth might take off. And I was going to pick all these beets because they're not going to bulb up. Like, I think that may be the biggest bulb I have. And that's like just a little nugget. So all these beets, those are going to come out because they're not doing anything. So those are coming out. Uh, herb basket doing fine. And there's the lily puts. And look how tall these yellow pear tomatoes are. That is approaching... Oh, five and a half feet. That's pretty tall. Still have not replanted anything where I had the uh, red giant mustard. All of my big tomatoes, I think, are pretty much gone. I did pick my brandy wine. Um, my prize brandy wine was a good size, and it was very tasty. I did eat it. Oh, there's a hornworm there. Look at that. Look. Yeah. And I want to come back out tonight uh with the black light and see how this guy lights up so don't let me forget to do that oh he looks angry doesn't he anyway we'll come back later dude richie tomato it's doing pretty good can't wait to try these now these are not safe from the hornworm as you saw last week but maybe they're safe from the stink bugs i don't know i haven't really seen stink bugs on these so and the flowers are still really pretty they're still really thorny 
really thorny. But lychee tomato, hopefully soon. That'll be a nice surprise. Um, <laughs> I, I did leave the grody <laughs> tomato from last week just to help me stay mad. Yeah, you can look at that and just be mad. These damn pests. Anyway, cherry tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. Um, now over here is probably the biggest ones that I still have. Um, that one there. This is, uh, what is this, black from Tula? Black creme. These are black creme here. Some more poop. So much poop. Um, another one, another one there. Um, and yeah, this needs to be cleaned out of the foliage really bad. It's just a little congested and we're going to get a lot of um, grody foliage and bad airflow. So, um, sweet Italian basil. That one's been pinched and looking nice and bushy. Cardinal basil is getting really tall. That is some really tall basil. So I will harvest some, and then I think I may leave some of these at the top so it can flower, because I really do want to see those flowers. So that'll be fun. Zinnias are doing beautiful, really pretty. Um, beans, garden beans, still need to rip those out. Still need to do some weeding back here. Over here, the tansy is doing really good. Um, and it is going to bloom. Yeah. So that's going to look really pretty. Um, Pattison Panache Frenchy French is flowering. So hopefully I can get some squash off of this one. The vines look okay right now. Um, they will be sprayed with the BT just to keep the uh, cabbage vine borer out of the vines. Um, also, somewhere in this area, I don't remember if it was here or over here, I planted more garden beans uh, last week and they haven't come up yet. So hopefully those come up soon. I need more garden beans for sure. Uh, these zinnias are doing great. These cosmos are doing wonderful. Um, okay, so we have come to the first of my surprises that I want to show you today. Look at this. <laughs> I have a blue boy bachelor button. Yay! So I planted those seeds the end of March. What the frick took so long? the end of March. It's the middle of July. But yeah, I'm excited. That's kind of fun. Um, oh, and there's another one. Right there. I like the, um, I like the blue and the orange together. That's pretty. Um, now, another development that is not a positive one. <sighs> it's flipping onions. Like the foliage has all rotted away. Like the foliage has just rotted. I don't know if it's all the rain or if they're just ready. Um, they're, they're not bulbed. Like they didn't bulb at all. But look, these are rotten. Let's see. Yeah, look, we got no bulbs and the foliage just rotted off. So what do I do about that, people? I would appreciate your honest opinion. So let's look at this one. This maybe has a little bit of a bulb, but not really. Look at that. No, I don't know what to do. But that's real disappointing. 80 bulbs. 80 little bulblets I planted. And I got nothing. Got nothing. So anyway, there's that. Give me some feedback on that. Um, balsam and patience looking pretty. Look at that. Real pretty. And I do see some seed pods. I don't know if they're ripe yet. That would be fun to show you what it's like to press them when they are ready. Because they explode you just press them and they just pop and seeds go everywhere. So I don't think those are ready yet though. And then these Albamosa Sagifolus. It is growing. It is growing and I think maybe it's gonna do me a flower. Yeah. But I really think these need to be moved over to the side of the house that floods and holds water because they are kind of marsh plants. These, uh, these, uh, marshy, mallowy hibiscus plants. They do like wet marshy conditions, so I may dig these up and move them. Plus, they'll be in more uh, more full sun over there. So, 
So that could happen. Um, look at this mess of vines. It's so thick in there. It's really a thick mass of moonflower and cypress vine and cardinal vine. And I did have a red one open yesterday, but this is not really gonna be a flowering thing just because of all the shade. Um, but it's kind of fun, a little bit fun. <laughs> Um, and these bunch onions, like that has a bigger bulb than my Stuttgarter. Look at that. That's a big bulb. Um, something is eating the bok choy. So I need a spray with the BT. I'm assuming it's a worm of sorts. Now this one's getting pretty big. That one's a good size right there. That's a lot bigger than it was even last week. So that's nice. So yeah, those are doing fine. Waltham butternut squash there. More moonflower on the fence. More butternut there, lots of weeds. I've got to get in here and weed all this. Um, this is all my junk that I had to move out of the grass so I can mow and weed eat in here. This is doing oh, so much poop. Good Lord. My garden is just nature's restroom. Yeah, it's gross. It's so gross. Anyway, all this stuff is looking exactly the same as last week except poopier, more poopy. This I do need to get planted somewhere. It's doing so good and I need to get it. Oh, it's doing so good because it rooted underneath. It's doing good, okay. Um, let's see, we did have more blue butterfly pea. This butterfly pea is doing really good. I'm getting intermittent blooms because it is a little shady over here, but it's doing really well. Um, wow, this passion vine really took off. That's grown. Um, wow, that's really grown. That's probably grown a foot. Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, this is doing really good, the Pandora vine. It's starting to twist its way around the lattice, which is good. And of course, these birdhouse gourds are getting so heavy. They're getting really big. Really happy about that. All right, let's go out. <laughs> Chloe. So... Remember how I said um, this Richmond green apple, probably I wasn't gonna find one till it was fully grown? <laughs> well, yesterday, now if I could find it, I put a bag on it so I could, there it is. Yeah, I found one yesterday. Right there, look at that. Yeah, didn't find any last week. And now look, we have one and it's ready. These are pretty small. But look at that. Yeah. They just hide in here. I saw several. Um, and I don't know why they were not ripening before now. I don't know if they needed the heat. But look, now I'm finding them all over the place. And this thing's been flowering for at least a month. So weird. Oh, yeah. Look. Look at that one. I didn't even see that one yesterday. Yeah. These are... Oh, oh, bees. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, the bees are all over this, and they have been, so it's just weird. Take that one. I have some here. That has a bag on it, and there's like one there. Like, literally, like overnight, and there's poop. Yeah. It's basically a poop tour. <laughs> it's like, look, look at the poop. Um, these leaves are getting real brown on the bottom, but I'm looking at the stalks, the, uh, the vines, and they look okay. Like, they don't look all split open and gross, so that's good. Um, once I harvest these sunflower heads and move some of these stalks out of here, I think my roselle hibiscus will be able to breathe and start putting on flowers again. Um, look at that. I believe that's a Concord grape that somebody finally got planted. That will also get more sun once all these sunflowers are gone. Now, did I run out here this morning and plant that real quick before the tour? No, didn't do that. Whatever. My acorn squash, this is a table queen. This is actually doing really good and it's flowering more. And I think once the sunflowers are gone, it'll be doing even better. It'll get a lot more sunlight. And hopefully, um, I don't think the squash vine borer got in there at all. I don't, the vines look okay. They're a little thin, but they're not damaged. So 
I mean, small favors, thank you. Well, this grape is putting on new leaves after all that damage earlier this season. So that's fun. That's one of the um, muscadine grapes. And then this watermelon is doing wonderful. Got another big one here in the bag. And then I see a baby one there. They're a little baby. This one, look, something got in there. And what was a tiny little black line last week is now a big black mushy. I'm just gonna need to pick this one because it's just gonna continue to rot. There. It's just gonna continue to rot. It, I can't save it. I'm sure I have some more melons coming on. This this has done really well. I'm really pleased with this. This is the Blacktail Mountain. It's a little tiny watermelon. It's doing really well. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, this one's doing really well. This is my dill. So if I wanted to pickle anything, any of these Richmond Green, I keep breaking things. Anyway, I can use that dill right there. We'll just call that a harvest. We'll call it harvesting. Pick that Brad's Atomic Grape there. Um, just the tomatoes are getting super tall. Oh, that's been chewed. Bet you there is a boom, boom. Look at that. So I'm totally coming out tonight with the black light. Stay tuned for that. But like I said, all my big tomatoes are gone. Just have one or two black creme. Um, I do have uh, a few lychees, and then the rest are um, the rest are just cherry tomatoes right now. Now this Seminole pumpkin, the vine looks like ass, like literally, it looks bad. But the vine, the the leaves are still green. It still has some vigor, so I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave this one. I'm gonna pull out these weeds, but I'm gonna leave it. We'll see what happens. I may cut off this one. But yeah, maybe it'll live, I don't know. And then this Roselle hibiscus. That's doing really well, it's getting big. Getting big, really, really excited. And there's a better look at the tansy. Yep, that's gonna be pretty. And this melon hasn't really grown much since last week. It's a little heavier, but it's not much bigger. Feels maybe getting a little soft. This might be ready. Hold on. I mean, it's pretty. I don't think it's ready, but it feels a little soft. And it doesn't, if it's still the same size by this time next week, I'm gonna pick it. But I'll put the bag back on, but I'm really excited about that. Yeah, brown leaves here. I think the vine is okay. So I don't see any vine bore damage. Um, I do have another cantaloupe here. This one did get fertilized. So, got another one there. Looks like my husband mowed my cucumber vine when he came by with the mower. That sucks. Um, I did have a cucumber though. These cucumbers hide behind the foliage. Oh, there. There we go. These are muncher cucumbers. And I do pick them small because literally the seeds get so tough. If they get bigger than, you know, six inches or so, the seeds are tough. So there's that one. Let's see, kooka melons. I did see some that were almost ready. There's a, there's one newly fertilized. On the side, there's another one getting close and then still a favorite this miniature whites they're so they're so cute so cute so prolific and so cute oh it's like storms coming hey not mad about that more poop so much poop if the storm doesn't blow it off we're gonna have a nice moonflower tonight look at that birdhouse gourds like that that is getting close to five pounds now. It just got really dark and the wind is picking up. All right, let's, let's wrap this up in, uh, 
in the circle bit. Yeah. It's a storm. Can I tell you that wind feels so good? Like the temperature just dropped by about 10 degrees. Nice. I wonder what time it is. I want to get a glass of wine and sit on the back porch with this. Love sitting outside during a storm. Okay, well, let's wrap it up so I'm not out here getting rained on. Okay, the circle bed. I did um, plant some of the things that I said I was gonna plant, so that's good. And I didn't do it this morning, so quit assuming things. I did it a couple days ago. <laughs> so um, I did notice some Russian sage popping up here because there was a plant right there that I ripped out and put in that pot over there. But um, so it did either from underground send up these two or they're from seed. I don't know, but they're there. So I'm gonna leave them there. That's cool. Um, this artichoke, I just don't even know what to do about these. They're not really getting bigger. So maybe they will next year. They just keep getting about this size, laying down, rotting, and then I pull them off. I don't know what that it's about. This is the blue salvia. I'll have to put the name on the screen because I don't remember the name of this blue salvia, but that's gonna be a pretty pop right there. Golden Edge Duranta. My St. Patrick has put up a lovely bloom. Look at that. That's gorge, gorgeous St. Patrick. And I do have some more buds. Bella is scared of storms, so she wants in. Hold on. Come here, Bebel. -Bell. I know. You don't want... Come on. You're scared. You be with me. All right. Anyway, so I have that there. I have a bud there. Get out of my back. No. And then another bud there. So this is doing really well. The mums are doing great, and they look so much better since I trimmed them back. This I need to deadhead, and obviously copper fungicide. Yikes. Yikes. Okay, black spot is strong with this one. Um, this yellow rose is doing well. Mum, golden edge. This gilded sun. Oh. Whew. Okay. Wind feels amazing. Feels amazing. Um, this gilded sun. I need to deadhead a little bit. That rose is beautiful. See? This. I mean, this artichoke's just grody. I don't know what it's doing. Maybe too much rain. We have had a lot of rain. It's grody. Okay, so here is Wendy's Wish Salvia. Here is Autumn Joy uh, Sedum. And then, of course, my Eternal Flame Rose, which does need some copper fungicide as well for the black spot. But the buds are nice and big and healthy. And we don't have the pest pressure anymore or am I lying? <laughs> I don't know. It's doing fine. Um, there is my other plant. I'll have to put the name on the screen. It's like some sort of, like maybe a Cuban, it's buttercup. It's like a, some sort of buttercup. It's like from Cuba or like Australia, um, like Florida or something. Anyway, the obviously the pollinators like it it's gonna get pretty big it's probably gonna get five five feet tall and wide but it kind of it has a nice yellow flowers like the roses and I think it's a nice complement with the golden edge Duranta um, same with this artichoke leaves are just laying down they get of a certain height and they just lay down it's gross um, here in the front I planted some Cuban gold Duranta so that is the golden edge golden edge and then this is the Cuban gold and these are cuttings that I took last year there is a video on me taking these cuttings and uh, they did really well more Wendy's wish salvia this is my orange rose that I don't know the name of we're about to get another bloom I did spray this with Captain Jack's yesterday because it looked a little sketchy so I sprayed that another uh, Cuban gold Duranta there and then this sedum is Autumn Fire. So I have Autumn Joy over there and Autumn Fire here. And then another Wendy's Wish Salvia. So three of the Wendy's Wish went where the 
Russian sage was. And then I brought in some of the Cuban gold Duranta to kind of bring in that gold from over there. The sedums are gonna be lovely. The little buttercup is gonna kind of complement the yellow roses. I mean, I'm, I'm digging it, I'm liking it. Um, I do have a big pile of black mulch in the backyard. So I wanna come freshen up this bed with black mulch. But other than that, Bella wants to be near me because of the storm. I have a tiny little little harvest here. Oh, I need to go back and pick the banana peppers and the rest of the little tiny tomatoes. But I mean, other than that, it's looking good. And it feels so good. I bet it dropped down to about 72. It's nice, which is pretty good for Southeast Texas, Northeast of Houston zone 8b slash 9a which i always forget to tell you guys in videos that's where i am but anyway things are looking amazing and i love this potage so much it's a pain in the ass it's a labor of love but i love it thanks for watching bye so i may have found some vine bore damage on the cantaloupe looks like vine bore like maybe he entered through the through the fruitlet um there's more here i don't know there's more here very interesting so more here I don't know. Is that vine borer or is that something else pooping? So BT is going to happen. I'm just going to spray everything with BT. That way it won't hurt my pollinators, but I'm guessing that's some sort of worm or maggot or caterpillar. And I need those melons. I need them. Okay. All right. That's all. Bye.